Hawk, I'm Your Brother, by Berg Thaler, illustrated by Peter Parnell. For Tony Schweitzer and Charlie Ingram, because they both know about flying. Rudy Soto dreams of flying, wants to float on the wind, wants to soar over canyons. He doesn't see himself some little light-winged bird that flaps and flutters when it flies. No cactus wren, no sparrow. He'd be more like a hawk, gliding smoother than anything else in the world. He sees himself a hawk, wrapped up in wind, lifting, facing the sun. That's how he wants to fly. That's all he wants, the only wish he's ever had. No matter what happens, he won't give it up. He won't trade it for easier wishes. There, playing alone on the mountainside, a dark, skinny boy calling out to a hawk. That's Rudy Soto. People here say that the day he was born, he looked at the sky and lifted his hands toward birds and seemed to smile at Santos Mountain. The first words he ever learned were the words for flying and for bird, and for up there, up there. And later on they say that every day he asked his father, when do I learn to fly? He was too young then to know he'd never get his wish. His father said, you run, you climb over rocks, you jump around like a crazy whirlwind. Why do you need to fly? I just do. I need to fly. In those days, he thought that somebody would give him the answer. He asked everybody. Everybody. And they always said, people don't fly. Never? Never. But Rudy Soto told them this. Some people do. Maybe we just don't know those people. Maybe they live far away from here. And when he met new people, he would look at them carefully. Can you fly? They'd only laugh and shake their heads. Finally, he learned to stop asking. Still, he thought that maybe flying is the secret old people keep to themselves. Maybe they go sailing quietly through the sky when children are asleep. Or maybe flying is for magic people. And he even thought that if no one else in the world could fly, he'd be the one who would learn it. Somebody ought to, he said. Somebody, me, Rudy Soto. There, barefoot on the mountainside, he'd almost fly. He'd dream he knew the power of great wings and sing up to the sun. In his mind, he always seemed to be a hawk, the way he flew. Of course, a boy like that would know every nest this side of the mountain. He'd know the time in summer when the young hawks learned to fly. And he'd think a thousand times, Hawk, I'm your brother. Why am I stuck down here? You have to know all this to forgive the boy for what he did. And even then, you may not think that he was right to steal the bird. It may seem cruel and selfish and mean, not worthy of one who says he's brother to all birds. But anyway, that's what he did. He stole a hawk, a red-tailed hawk, out of its nest before the bird could fly. It was a nest that Rudy Soto must have seen all his life, high on the ledge of a steep, rough canyon wall. He thought that nest might be the best home in the world, up there on Santos Mountain. And he even thought, that there might be some special magic in a bird that came from Santos Mountain. Somehow he thought he'd share that magic, and he'd fly. They say it used to be that way when we knew how to talk to birds and how to call a bird's wild spirit down into our own. He'd heard all those old stories, and he'd seen hawks go flying over mountains and felt their power fill the sky. It seemed to him he'd fly if a hawk became his brother. 
That's why he climbed the cliff at dawn singing to make the magic stronger. And that's why he left an offering of food, to show he was that brother. But the young hawk struggled and screamed, called to the bird circling overhead, called to its nest on Santos Mountain. Listen, bird, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of me. Climbing down, he held that bird so close he felt its heartbeat. And the bird felt his. You'll be all right. You'll see. But even a hawk too young to fly knows he's meant to fly. He knows he isn't meant to have a string tied to his leg. He knows he isn't meant to live in a cage. Every day he screams. He pulls against the string. He beats his wings against the cage. You'll be happy with me, bird. You will. But the bird looks out with fierce free eyes and calls to its brothers in the canyon. Every day it is the same. They see those other birds learning to fly, learning the touch and roll and lift of air, learning to dip and dive. They turn when the wind turns, but down below with his feet touching sand, Rudy Soto's hawk can only flap its wings and rise as high as a string will let him go. Not high enough, not far enough. Rudy Soto tells his hawk, Someday we'll fly together. He wants to please that hawk. He's sure he will. He's sure it's going to be his brother. Each day when the melons are picked and the wood is chopped and the corn is hoed, Rudy Soto gives a long, soft call and he comes running. He always says, I'm here now, bird. What do you want to do? He takes the bird out of the cage and ties the string around its foot, and the bird sits on his shoulder as they walk the desert hills. They go down sandy washes and follow deer tracks into canyons. Sometimes they sit looking off to Santos Mountain. And sometimes they even go on the other side of Santos Mountain, to a place where water trickles over flat, smooth rocks. The bird plays in that cold water dips his wings into the stream and jumps and flaps. And the boy says, see, you're happy here with me. But even when he says it, he knows it isn't true because the bird is tugging at the string and you see sky reflected in his eyes and his eyes flash and his wings move with the wind. You can tell he wants to fly. You can tell that's all he wants, the only dream he has. Rudy Soto knows what it is like to want to fly. He knows himself what it is like to have a dream. But even so, he waits until the end of summer, hoping that the bird will be content. Every day, it is the same. The bird still tugs and pulls and yearns against the string. Rudy Soto knows that the hawk will not give up. What else can a boy like Rudy Soto do? He has to say, I don't want to see you so unhappy, bird. And he has to say, one of us might as well fly. What else can he do if he really loves that bird? He has to take him back to Santos Mountain, to the place where he would like to fly. That's where they go, up to those high red rocks. There is a wind and clouds move across the sky and from far away you can smell rain. Now he unties the string that has held his hawk so long. The hawk is on his shoulder. Fly now, bird. Go on. The hawk turns, he moves his wings. Bird, you can fly. The hawk takes his time. There on the rocks, he jumps and flaps, rises and sinks. He has to learn the force of air and the pull of wind and the feel of freedom 
Maybe he jumps a hundred times before he seems to catch the wind, before he lifts himself into that summer sky. At last he soars, his wings shine in the sun, and the way he flies is the way Rudy Soto always dreamed he'd fly. The bird looks down, then he calls a long hawk cry, the kind of cry he used to call to his brothers. Only this time he calls to Rudy Soto, and the sound floats on the wind. Rudy Soto answers with the same hawk sound. Back and forth they call, brother to brother they call, all through the afternoon. High on the side of Santos Mountain, Rudy Soto lifts his arms. His hair blows in the wind, and in his mind he's flying too. It doesn't even matter that his feet are on the ground. It seems to him he has the whole sky to fly in when he hears that call. He knows he'll keep it in his mind forever. Rudy Soto doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't say, lucky me, I know about flying, I know about wind. He never says, there is a hawk that is my brother, so I have a special power. But people here can tell such things. They notice that a hawk calls to him from Santos Mountain, and they hear the way he answers. They see that Rudy Soto has a different look about him. His eyes flash like a young hawk's eyes, and there is sky reflected in those eyes, and it's the sky high over Santos Mountain. People here are not surprised. They're wise enough to understand such things. 